Hi, this is Cody Deagle Orians. And I'm Alex Giannini, and we're the program managers of the Westport Library. And this is 10 Questions With, where we interview some of our favorite authors while they and we are stuck here at home. These 10 questions are for author Rob Hart. Say hi, Rob. Hey, everyone. Who uh, uh, Westporters and Storyfest goers might remember from our inaugural Storyfest in 2018. Uh, Rob joined Sam Weller and Gwendolyn Keist for our Bradbury evening, which celebrated the work of Ray Bradbury. Rob is best known around the world for The Warehouse, mm -hmm. uh, his near future thriller that's awesome, and it's been optioned by, uh, for film by Ron Howard. Yeah. So Rob, first question, which project of yours should people grab while they are stuck at home? Oh, definitely the warehouse, uh, you know, because, and, and here's the thing, um, I, and I had this conversation with Chuck Wendig, who wrote Wanderers, which is about a pandemic, uh, and the warehouse is about one company sort of taking over the American economy and putting workers into, uh, you know, company housing and, and sort of using that leverage and power to kind of do what they want. And uh, we're, we're, we're seeing that now where, where small businesses are closing and, and Amazon is becoming stronger and stronger and they're hiring and they're going to come out of this with, with a much more clear playing field with a lot of their competition gone. And, and I was saying to Wendig, I'm like, how does it feel to be right? But also like to feel terrible about it. Um, so uh, I, I would say check out the warehouse because I think that it sort of speaks to a lot of things that are currently happening. But I do think there's enough hope within the book that you won't, you know, end up crying in a ball on your kitchen floor. Uh, all right. So what's your go-to book right now by somebody else? Uh, the book that I am reading right now is uh, A Song for a New Day by Sarah Pinsker, uh, which is about a world where... <laughs> a pandemic has basically made large gatherings illegal. And uh, what, what's, what's happening is that uh, this sort of underground music scene pops up where you've got, you know, one scene that's entirely online and very, you know, commercialized and sort of like the underground punk rock scene. And, and it's about the power of, of art and music and community. And uh, again, exactly the kind of book I think, you know, works well right now, because it takes a lot of those fears and anxieties that we have. And then it shows us, you know, but we can get through them and we can get past them. And uh, I'm not done with it yet, but I am tearing through it. I'm loving it. What about your go-to album? You know, the, the album that I've been listening to most is uh, Olafur Arnolds, um, who is an Icelandic auth uh, musician. And the album I've been listening to is called Remember. And uh, it's really cool, like, synthy, like, piano string stuff. And it's really just because that's been, like, my writing soundtrack for the new book. So I've been just listening to it nonstop. Uh, but it's also super chill and relaxing, which I think we all kind of need super chill and relaxing right now. Agreed. Um, how about your go-to movie or TV show? You know, I have not been watching a lot of movies or TV um, because I've just been like my wife works during the day and then I, I come up to my office at night and I write. But uh, we did watch uh, Hobbs and Shaw, the Fast and Furious movie, and it was just like wonderfully and beautifully and appropriately stupid. Uh, it was exactly what I needed. Um, I'm also thinking of finally watching The Wire. Uh, I've never seen The Wire. I've always meant to get to it. And at this point, it's like, you know what? All I got is time. <laughs> What about your go-to beverage? So uh, <laughs> I've been drinking a lot of uh, <clears throat> a local brewery's beer. Uh, there's this brewery called Flagship on Staten Island that I like quite a bit. So uh, I, I, I never really drank a ton of beer. I, I usually am a whiskey guy, but, you know, just being at home, like you can't just slam three glasses of whiskey a night. Like that's ridiculous. But, you know, you can have like one or two beers and not feel bad. Uh, and sometimes, you know, when you're having a stressful day, you can pop one around lunchtime. So, uh, so I've been slowly working my way through their, their sort of oeuvre. Um, I'm not an IPA guy, but they've got a blood orange IPA that's really, really good. Nice. Uh, and just because this is the first time I've worn a button down shirt in two weeks, what's your uh, go to outfit? Oh, God, sweatpants. Like, I, I, I'll, I'll put on jeans if I'm going for a walk around the neighborhood or if I'm talking my, taking my daughter out to play. But, like, I'm just glad I have a really good stock of comfy sweatpants, uh, which, again, like, I, I worked from home before this. So I, I, I was somewhat prepared. Um, but I also, I feel like, you know, I, I, I respect my wife for wanting to get dressed like she's going to the office when she goes to her desk. But I also kind of feel like, you know what, I just, no, yeah, it's sweatpants and T-shirt life for me. What's the go-to place you'd rather be? 
the one place that I really miss is uh, I, I've been renting an office space um, in, in the city. It's called the writer's room. And it's basically like a shared co-working space for writers. And it's it's super chill. And, and I'm always really productive there. And it's quiet. And it's nice. And it was like this really nice little oasis of, of just, you know, concentration and focus. And I really wish I can get back to that. Um, I miss that a lot. It was it was really good for me for, in terms of productivity. How about your go-to time waster? Oh man, um, Twitter. God, I've spent way too much time on Twitter. I need to get off Twitter. <laughs> but like, it's it, it actually is a somewhat decent like news aggregator. Um, but also like, there's fun, goofy, dumb stuff to do on it. So I just keep on, I, I keep on going into it when I, I should be trying to be more productive. Who's the go-to person you'd like to hear answer this set of questions? You know, uh, I, I have you guys heard of um, The Return by Rachel Harrison? I have, yeah. Okay, yeah. That book just came out. It came out yesterday. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. Like, it really, it was so scary that I legitimately could not finish it at night. Like, I was reading it in my office at night, and I was like, I am so creeped out right now. I'm going to finish this during the daytime tomorrow. Um, I, I, I would love to hear her answer the questions, uh, you know, besides the fact that she wrote a great book, it's also a really hard time for debut authors. You know, um, I'm sort of in a, a comfortable position in that, you know, my book's been out for a while. Uh, I'm working on a new one, but debuts, you know, first couple of weeks sales are really important. So she's kind of in this and, and it's happening to a lot of people like Andrea Bartz with the herd, you know, who is another fantastic person with a great book. But, um, you know, I, I would like to see as much much uh, attention paid to debut authors right now as possible. Agreed. Yeah, that's it, it's a definitely a tough time. Um, all right. So just to 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 wrap up the ten on a, a little bit of a happier note, what's your uh, your go to nostalgia bomb that brings you to a happy place? Oh man, um, I would say my happy place right now is just like I I think you can kind of see in the background is my super comfy reading chair. Um, <laughs> You know, and, and my office does really look like a mess right now. Um, but there's something about that chair that like just being there and reading um, has been really, really sort of good for my mental health. Just as kind of like, you know, trying to pretend like this whole thing isn't going on. And then just to wrap up, so how can people find you while they're stuck at home? Uh, pretty like on Twitter, how can they reach out to you there? Sure. Uh, I'm Rob W. Hart on Twitter um, and using it constantly so hard to miss. Uh, I'm also Rob W. Hart on the web and I'm on Instagram at Rob W. Hart one because uh, apparently someone else got there before me and I have been barely using Facebook. So I would not really encourage people to find me there at this point. Well, Rob, thanks so much for taking a little time out of your, uh, your day to uh, hang out with us on Zoom. Yeah, no, thanks so much for doing this. Um, you know, I feel for you guys. I know this is going to be hard on libraries, uh, but, you know, this is this was a great idea. And, and I hope that, you know, people hear this and they see this and they get excited about it. As do we. And so, like, you can be able to find, for everybody out there, you can find this one and all the others that, we're gonna, that we do uh, on our website for the Westport Library. That's westportlibrary.org. Thanks again, Rob. And uh, look for others. All right. Thanks, Rob. Cool. Well, that was fun.